Hello, Salesforce Chef here. I'm so excited to have Simran Singh with me here. He is one of the most amazing Salesforce developers I know. I would love to introduce you to him. And so, without further ado, please, Simran, tell me about yourself. Hey, uh, uh, Zaid, it's really nice talking to you today. Uh, I grew up in Canada. I graduated in management information systems. So, uh, I've been doing business analyst work, quality analysis work, and then I got exposed to some project management work as well. Uh, and then I got exposed to Salesforce while while I was at work. That, that really intrigued me. Um, so I, I think I've told you this offline that I worked for Google. And then I came, I was doing trailheads and things of that nature. And then I came across your, your channel about a couple of years ago now on uh, on YouTube, which really inspired me to dig deep into Salesforce even more. Yeah, so that's kind of the path where I come from. Simon, what do you do right now? Right now, I'm actually working for Accenture as a, uh, my job title is a senior Salesforce developer, do Apex coding, Salesforce admin work. Yeah, so that's, that's what my job title is right now. But then I also do a lot of business analysis, a lot of admin work. Then I do some production support. The last thing. What was the last thing you were doing before you were a senior Salesforce developer at Accenture? I was a support developer. I did support VF pages, wrote a little bit of triggers, Apex Bash classes, things of that nature. So, okay. Uh, yeah, but it was a support role. You were exposed to Salesforce before, but your first full time Salesforce role was at Accenture, right? Yes, exactly. When I was working at health insurance company, I was exposed to Salesforce because I was helping the sales team. I got excited. I decided to go into Salesforce full time. And that's when my career shift happened. You, you were very lucky that you got exposed to Salesforce before. And so you were able to transition and you got exposed to Salesforce at very famous companies, Google, Electronic Arts. What if someone has no Salesforce exposure? They just self-taught. Uh, what should they do to get their first Salesforce job? What do you think are the right steps for them? If you're looking to specialize in Salesforce, my recommendation would be a 10 professional ten training course where you have a professional to like guide you along because there's a lot of stuff out there. If you're going to try to learn it yourself, you're going to be, it's going to take you forever to learn. So have a, a mentor or a professional like yourself who can help you along with very it's structured learning. That's one thing I would really recommend. And then fully immerse yourself first into admin where you're learning a lot of admin skills because you can't just learn development without learning the admin first. So you have to know the native features of Salesforce that you can just do it with, without the coding. So then I would recommend doing admin first. And then once you've done the admin, then I would dwell into, into the coding. Another thing I would highly, highly recommend is do trailhead. More of the badges, the better. So that would be the second part. Third part would be do projects. You should be able to have like a portfolio of full completed projects and in both admin and development. So if you're going development part route, you should be able to say that, yes, I have worked on some projects as well. That's that's absolutely, absolutely necessary. So those are the three uh, blocks. I agree with the other two about having Salesforce admin base, having projects, but what about why badges? Do badges, it's because you're getting used to the Salesforce environment. The more badges you do, more features you can get familiar with. How I would create an account contact relationship. This is how you write a formula. This is how I create a lookup relationship or master detail relationship. So those things are really, really important. In my opinion, badges are also important. It's like, it's like a playground. More time you spend playing around is mm -hmm. more time you explore. Uh, different features. Say so you, you listed three things. If, if you could pick two, which one would be? A, a mentor would be really important or a structured learning class and two would be projects. Okay, yeah, I, I would pick it in the same order because badges you can do like passively. You can do things and you're not really sure what you did. But I think when you do projects, you got to really understand what you're doing and like be able to explain it. I think it's forcing someone to learn more. One of the Great things for you, lucky things for you and for me were, were that we were exposed to Salesforce in a job. I got exposed to Salesforce by accident. Did you seek out Salesforce projects or were you, was it for you accidental? For me, it was like an accidental thingy. We had a Salesforce admin in the company who left. So a lot of stuff kind of, we had to like figure it out ourselves. So generating reports, dashboards, creating formula fields, a lot of admin stuff. So we had to like kind of learn it learn it on the go 
So that's where I kind of got exposed to Salesforce. And then once I started spending more time on the trail, I became even more comfortable. So that's that's how I got exposed to it. What three pieces of advice would you give to someone who wants to learn the basics of Apex? What resources should they use? Are there some advice you would give to someone who wants to learn the basics of Apex? Basics trailhead is too difficult. Like it ex- expects you to know some basics of coding already, but what worked for you? I said, you know, I had done some oops concepts in, in, in the college. So I had really good notes. I kind of fell back on those notes, but then it's it's important to have a mentor. Like like I was saying, like I'm sure in your bootcamp, you're going to cover oops base apes, oops concepts. So it's really important to know how to do for loops, how to do write SQL queries, how to uh, create a list, arrays, maps. So these are all the important concepts you need to know. So yeah, I, I can't emphasize enough like how important oops concepts are. Uh, yeah, you could probably learn it online yourself, but it's 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 very challenging, especially if you come from a non-coding background. Learning it is is very very challenging. It's always good to have a coding uh, like a mentor or someone or or structured classroom where somebody could teach you. How do you suggest they learn oops, oops concepts? There's a lot of resources online. You can you can pick it up by. I know, but like, which is there a resource you would suggest that's the best one? Because there, it's very difficult. Someone is starting starting out, they can get confused which resource to use, and you can suggest. There is Udemy. There is YouTube. There is a couple of really good courses on Udemy as well. There is YouTube. You can learn it. But then again, if you don't have any knowledge at all, it's gonna be hard for you to follow. Yeah. and understand it you might have to like really have someone break it down for you that's what i'm saying like mm-hmm. there's tons of resources online you can learn oops concepts online for sure you got exposed to salesforce at google electronic arts and you decided to change your career you decided to become a salesforce developer and you learned apex you did projects you did an admin project you did a the development project and then you applied for jobs right how many jobs did you apply for i applied for like only two or three and then both both deloitte and accenture offered me position why didn't you apply to like 10 were you so confident in yourself that you get these jobs no you know what i was studying really hard for for my projects and then i was also doing like i was doing salesforce projects by myself uh and then i was also doing uh, trailhead and I was also doing certifications so when I started applying I didn't really want to apply because I felt like I, I could use some more time to even build more projects so then I just only applied for a couple of jobs when I had three rounds of interview total one of them was phone screening one was a another technical round over the phone and then third was a panel interview where I had to go in person I could have applied for more job but but I was kind of testing the market you were testing the market with the big companies, don't you start testing with the small companies, companies you, you are less likely to work for? You just went for the big fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was, I actually reached out to a recruiter on LinkedIn. I didn't even apply for the position, to be honest. And then oh. when I talked to the recruiter, she really pushed me. She's like, no, 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 you should definitely apply, 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 apply. So I was like, okay. Then I And then I applied and then she got me in. When you were learning Apex, what did you find the most difficult? Man, the most difficult part was uh, how to do rapper classes. So you found this really confusing when you were learning Apex. Like, how did you keep yourself motivated? How did you prevent yourself from giving up? I mean, I'm not going to lie. There were a lot of times in, in, in this journey when I was like, man, this is really complex. Uh, like, this this test class is, is very tough. Uh, or I'm not getting enough test coverage. Or, you know, just this this, this logic is not working. What is wrong? It was a lot of challenging times, I'm not gonna lie, but the thing is you just gotta keep going. You just gotta keep trust the process. Just keep pushing through, keep pushing through. As a developer, it's continuous learning, and I'm sure you know that too. It's a lot of continuous learning. You cannot give up. You cannot stop learning. So yeah, there was many times when I thought about quitting, but you just gotta keep keep going, keep going. What kept you going? Your mother kept pushing you, or your brother? Where'd you get this? No, my parents are like, do what you feel like. No, it wasn't. It wasn't family. It was just. It was just me internally, just my motivation. Uh, I enjoy coding. I I like to read the code. I like to understand the code. I like to see what it's doing. Doing coding is fun, but then at the same time, it's, it's, it's it is challenging, no doubt. What really helped me was that uh, I was able to uh, take the final project with me, the one that I made for for my coding interview. 
Uh, so I showed them that this is a project that I've made. This is what this project does. You know, this is what the functionality is. I kind of challenged them that, hey, ask me questions about this project. So that, that really helped me too. Were they impressed when you took your final project to the interview? I believe so. I mean, they, they looked at my project. They asked me to demo it. They asked me to show me the functionality, show them the functionalities, see what the project is, is accomplishing. Uh, they looked at the code. Uh, so yeah, that, that really definitely helped. Is there anything you found complicated, not prepared for when you became a full-time Salesforce developer? Yeah, I initially had a, some, some issues with the GitHub, uh, even though GitHub is so simple. Uh, I wasn't really good in debugging. Debugging was challenging as well. 